The film Holy Conspiracy has a prime concern how science should be taught in contemporary India and whether religion or scripture has any role to intervene in the way science education should be continued in our country. The film features primarily a science teacher who is ostracized both socially and culturally and later legally for refusing to teach the words of the scriptures in the name of science. In a book like Children's Science Encyclopedia, we find entries like Evolution of Life. But the film starts with a point that the whole process of evolution of life as seen by science is to some extent negated and contradicted by views of religion which is diametrically opposite to science. Rationality and faith are two opposing factors in the film and young Swamon Chatterjee is given the responsibility is playing the role of a truth seeker, a kind of intermediary who would try to balance these diametrically opposite poles. He is a science teacher teaching in his own village, Kunal Baske, played by Stromon. Stromon, as you may know, is a very important modern actor of our times who has made his mark in theatre over the past one decade or so and also acting in films and other medias, making films as well. Stromon is playing the titular character in the film, Kunal Baske, the tribal teacher in the tribal heartland of India, Christian in origin but not Christian as a teacher, right? Yes. Somun, would you say that the role you are playing is very essential to our understanding of science education in India? Yes, because uh, the role that I am playing represents a paradox in its own way. Konal, at some point in the film, confides in front of the law and in front of the public that I am a converted Christian by birth. But I have known of gods from my culture and those gods were never represented in any of the institutions that I have been to. Right. I have learnt about gods and learnt to worship gods that are not mine. And for an Aboriginal person who comes from a certain culture, who is a first generation educated person, science is probably the, the only gateway to sort of a reconciliation that with all the changes and all the blows that an Aboriginal person might and does, very much does, uh, you know, face during his journey or her journey as a thinking person. And as far as teaching science in this country is concerned, Kunal represents the dichotomy of, of sense, understanding, previous education and the superstructure constantly trying to meddle with history, constantly trying to meddle with scientific narrative to, to perpetuate religious and, and fundamental uh, thoughts and fundamental discourses. And uh, I, I think the, the, the quite at the beginning of the, of the film, this particular film, Kunal confides in front of his own students that there is a new booklet out here talking about science that I do not know of. So forgive me, but I'll go on with the science I know and re have reasons to believe in. The choice remains on you. Uh, when my school going children saw the film last night, they say, how could a teacher say that I don't know this book, right? So the film starts with a dichotomy that the teacher confides to his good students that he doesn't know about this book because he can't really say he doesn't believe in any word of the new textbook of science that is being permeated and percolated in the name of science. So is this the major crisis that your character sees in this film? And also, 
the original walk the, the basis of this film the inheritors of wind it doesn't mention a tribal person but in this film the added layer of the narrative is kunal baske represents a person who is not part of the institutionalized religion hinduism islam or christianity he is converted to christianity so the layers are more than usual right yes because uh, what is interesting in this film is uh, that the whole question of conversion that he is from a converted christian family he he has known christianity as his religion from the very beginning of his consciousness uh, what is interesting in the indic spectrum is that christianity is also quite a minority in this country mm-hmm. and he comes from a more minuscule more micro minority of aboriginals so as far as the superstructure of majority is concerned the superstructure of classics are concerned the canons are concerned even uh, his uh, you know conversion into christianity while it gives him leases to avenues in life education and also a sense of being powerful yes also a sense of being powerful but that is limited to an extent because if we look at the very reality of this country which our director has beautifully uh, narrated in this film is that even a christian person while not mitigated by violence all the time is somewhat on the tertiary notions of religious practices in this country and then his own kunal's own problem is as his consciousness grows as he grows into a man from a young man uh, he 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 comes into the whole confusion that while i profess science and i have to go to church once a day to a god that i'm not really sure of so i i i think that's 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 the essence of of shantal uh, aboriginals in this country because i i remember this particular meeting with gokul hajda uh, whom my director sent me to 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 spend a day with him he is a shantal teacher one of the first generation master degree holders in his locality so he teaches children and he has worked for tribal welfare all over the world not only in india so i remember this one particular day i was studying him recording his the way he speaks bengali and teaches children how he interacts with children and in our lunch break we went for a smoke and he was sitting there and he was telling me that the problem with christian conversion in our community is that more than the bible what mattered is education and a basket of rice mm-hmm. that that came with the cross mm-hmm. right so most of our people their allegiance was necessarily not to the cross and but it, rather the protection applies, christianity gave them it it applies to most of the people who get converted yes. in the course of time because yes. poverty plays a very important role in the mind of the believer in a country like ours it, it applies to hinduism and islam as well if if you broaden the spectrum into southeast asia now about the role you are at the center of the play right and what would happen to you is the crucial question and whether science will win and whether the religious beliefs will win now how did you figure out your role in this film because two titans of indian cinema and stage acting are essentially playing two different roles to save or to kill you in the film <laughs> how, how what were what were going through your mind when you approached the film set for the first time that this is a film around me these two titans were the easy part uh, at the risk of sounding arrogant i'll mm-hmm. I'll, I'll i'll say the honest honest uh, you know response that i had back in that time because when you have superior actors when you have have uh, actors of their caliber around so the one thing you're sure of is that if there are mistakes that would be mine mm-hmm. <laughs> and and often in our you know commercial film culture we don't really end up getting the right response from the co-actors mm-hmm. whereas in this film all of us i'm sure all the other actors there was certain of the fact that the best will come from that end all i have to do is listen and reciprocate 
So that, I, I, as far as the titans are concerned, Mr. Nasruddin Shah and Shumitra Chatterjee, that wasn't a pressure at all. That was a privilege, of course. And of course, there were jitters on the first day of the shoot to finally see those, those beautiful actors in front of me, starting to rehearse with them. But I would say this, that that was the least worrisome part. The worrisome part for me was uh, the paradox that I'm a Brahmin, mm -hmm. playing an Aboriginal mm -hmm. teacher. Given my own caste, mm -hmm. not that I ascribe to it, mm -hmm. but the world does. Given my own caste, I'm used to the very best a brown man can get mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Whereas Konal isn't. And, and, and to fill his, fill his shoes, to, to really take myself away from all the privilege that I'm very automatically used to, very spontaneously used to, and really ensure the understanding that this is a person who is actually re reliant on letters only in his journey towards power, his journey towards understanding and nothing else, no other formative structure is behind him to really push him along the way of the urban consciousness. So, so from the actor's perspective, getting beneath the skin of the character yeah. was a challenge because you had no emotion memory to bank up. In. Yes, absolutely. I have not known. I have known pain in my own way. But to assume that that can be equated with the pain of an Aboriginal person in this country, currently what the Aboriginal communities all over India and Southeast Asia are, are facing on a regular basis, to, to understand that, Sraman, that Sraman, was you, tough. you were known for your painstaking efforts to uh, go and approach a character. Did you prepare academically as well? Well, uh, if you remember, around the time I got cast in this film, I was doing a particular play called Bhadroja, uh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, directed mm -hmm. and written by Shudipto Chatterjee. And uh, during that, you know, very gruesome and beautiful four months of preparation, five months of preparation, where I was playing Matan, the, the main lead of that, that particular play, I got to learn a lot about this community, thanks to Shudip Tuda and all the other people I came in touch with during my preparation. So there were two aspects. One was the body and the other was the language. Now, I'm born and brought up in Asansola. I, I was born very near to this Closer particular dialect. to the Sansal this, this, yes, area. Yes, the, 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 the dialect that these people speak, especially when they're speaking Bengali, was something that I was aware of since my childhood. My friends used to speak in that dialect. I, and that practice got brushed beautifully again when I was doing Bhadruja. But Shudipto Da, I remember with fond gratitude that underlined a very important part in the making of that drama, that Shomun, while you have an actor's body that is capable in many ways, you have to understand that you're representing a community whose language has been suppressed by the lingual structures and politics of this country. So when your words stop, your arms, your legs, your movement, your body, your, your physical energy is what, what represents your own character. And I think that preparation helped me a lot to understand and uh, how Kunal Basri. And how helped you to underline and pinpoint the aspects that you need to learn and underline in this film? I'll give you a very trivial example and I'm ever grateful to Shwebalda for pointing this out. I remember this one scene where Kunal is in custody mm -hmm. and, and the journalist mm -hmm. and Amrita's character, Rishmi Mal, she also comes to meet him and then the journalist comes. So he's inside the custody, he's, yes. he's bare-bodied and to, he's sweating. Towards the beginning of the film. Towards the beginning of the film, right. So he's sweating. And uh, I remember when the shot was being set up, the first question was, are you comfortable uh, removing your shirt? And I said, yeah, I've been doing that for a long time on stage, so why not in front of the camera? I'm fine with that. And then it started. And I remember before the first take, he came to me because I was sweating profusely. And also they needed some sweat on my body. So I did some you know, exercises to get myself a little more drenched for the camera. So once that was done and I was getting ready for the shot, I, I started patting myself with a cloth I had on my back. And suddenly Shoibalda came and uh, he told me, Shroman, don't do that. And I said, uh, yeah, tell me why. And he said a beautiful thing. He said, uh, you might not be aware of this, or maybe you have forgotten your old Shantal friends. Heat and, and the viscosity 
and the 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 presence of sweat on your body reacts very differently with urban bodies sweat is not discomfort for kunal joseph baske get comfortable with the sweat it's not a not a botheration it's a botheration for you because you you have in habit in <laughs> urban body <laughs> urban body so i i think because at the end of the day acting is a very visual job at the end of the day your passage weighs your own body and and to understand uh, the actor's body that i needed to 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 arrive at to do this role this particular instance i remember very fondly because that in that little trivial det- detail that he is not a person who would constantly rub himself to get rid of the sweat sweat is fine with him it's not a discomfort for him the stench is not a discomfort for him he's a man of the man of the soil yeah. and 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 to understand that opened other avenues opened an avenue of resistance in the mind for me so mon you were also fortunate to be part an essential part of a master class in modern film acting as well uh in very few words how do you i wouldn't say rate how would you describe the performances by shwamit babu and nasir ji in this film well one has to consider and be respectful full to the fact that shomitra babu was not at his at his physical best when he was doing this role it was by the very end of his career and he was genuinely very sick i remember every day a nurse would accompany him and there were other attenders and he would only be there for 4 to 5 hours because he was really really very sick but that never reflected in his work of course what i can say with all due humility of course because i don't consider myself qualified to talk about these two actors but Nasir ji is uh, I I believe Nasir sahab is is more of a keen student of acting even at this age I was surprised on the very first day this I have never told him that I was just getting ready for my zone because the first shot was mine Amrita Zain Nasiruddin Shah's and there was Kaushik Da and others also Shubhrajit Da in that shot so while we were getting ready for the shot and the camera was being set up I I noticed he was rehearsing like a child does before a rehearsal he was completely unaware of the media and all the other people who were there on the floor looking at him but he was rehearsing there is a tendency among senior actors that they don't really make their rehearsals visible but he was fine with it whereas shomitra babu i have followed his work for all my life and i have closely watched his work through theater also was well, is more of a more of a technically too sound an actor and i believe that technique sort of preceded his uh, his his disposition rather than prepar- preparation he was he was very aware of of how much of this is the final take and how much of this is going to be taken from a different angle and he would save it up for there and and, and given his age and given his health at that point of time i used to notice that he would he would save up for those moments and rest of it he would go by the by the rails of technique rather than completely immersed in the character as nasi saab was very beautiful and i i i think these th- these two are very very interesting approaches for any student actor like us to watch and understand that these are many processes of getting where you need to go to and uh, yeah that's that's all i can say about them the last thing is that uh, how would a student of science see this film given the kind of scenario we are in when intolerance is on the rise and everything is being watched and scrutinized and being violated whenever a rational person speaks out how should a student of science approach a film like this the holy conspiracy well the funny part is that a student of science or a professor of science or somebody who 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 considers science to be an important part of his daily life would definitely have to consider the fact that when you are professing when you are exercising a thinking process that is fueled by science rather than obnoxious uh, other things you know, other things uh, one has to admit that the that the plight of kunal joseph baske is very much knocking at your doors every day it's just we are still not aware of it because somehow right now where we are situated in the very protection of the urban 
capital uh, we are still not uh, that affected maybe but every day the newspapers and the news channels give you give you reasons to understand that this plight is nearby it's coming and, and it is very much ground there. beneath the feet has slipped yes because because the funny part is that the superstructures right now not to mention any political parties but the superstructure right now is not a superstructure um, uh, unlike popular belief they are not uneducated they are more aware of science than the messiahs of science are the denial of scientific discourse to 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 superfluously put religious discourse over everything in this country i think that is happening with a constant denial of of the existing scientific discourses that are there to create the generations to come the people who are negating it are aware of that existence they are aware that it is wrong when the when wrong is orchestrated with the consciousness of the right that's a battle which is way hard than just putting up placards and walking on the street and i think any science, science scientific minded person would would admit this while watching the film that this is a danger that is nigh on him or her or them at any point of time someone very nicely put and very well articulated <laughs> thank you thank very you much so much. It's a pleasure we really wa- watch uh, want to see you in the theaters because tomon has put up his best foot forward in this film that is so kind of you and it's a pleasure talking to you always thank a learning you so much thank you so much your honor i hold that the right to think is very much on trial a man is on trial a thinking man 